Alrighty, and now let's head over to our NFL schedule where we're breaking down every single game of every single week, predicting the winners uh, all the way to the Super Bowl of this season. Four months before the regular season officially begins, uh, we will be crowning the winner. So after eight weeks, let's recap on what we did so far. After eight weeks, we got the Steelers at the top of the AFC North at 5-2. and two. The Colts at the top of the AFC South at 8-0. and oh. The Bills at the top of the AFC East at 5-2. and two. And the Chiefs at the top of the AFC West at 8-0. Oh. Uh, what did we just hit there? Did we just... Mm, I think I clicked something. Not good. Alrighty. Doesn't seem like anything went wonky. Okay. Okay, so here we go. Back to the NFC North. Now the leader of the NFC North as uh, the Packers at 6-2. and two. Uh, Bucks atop the NFC South at 7-1. and one. The Giants atop the NFC East at 5-3. and three. And the Rams atop the NFC West at 6-2 and two after eight weeks. So let's go to week nine, predict the winners, and see what's going to shake out here in the seeding. So here we go. Jets at the Colts and... Pfft, Psh, come on, easy peasy here. Uh, Robert Sala versus Frank Reich and Carson Wentz. What are you nuts? Colts all day. Colts at home, especially. Come on, easy there. Browns at the Bengals should be a pretty good one, but I'm going to take the Browns here on the road. I like their defense. I like their offense. In this Bengals team, we still are little question marks on the offense. I don't know how good Joe Burrow is going to look after that injury. He should be fine, but how's this play going to look? We just talked about him today. He is good to go for week one, most likely. He's on track, but that injury is gruesome and uh, maybe a little PTSD from that potential. All right, Texans at the Dolphins. This one's easy. Dolphins get the win. We just robbed them. Uh, we we made their franchise trash in the front office, and now we're going to make this uh, franchise trash on the field. Texans at Dolphins. Texans try to want to get kind of the revenge for the Dolphins swindling them with that Laramie Tunsil trade, but you're not going to do that. It's not going to happen. Dolphins get the win. Bills at the Jags. Bills get it done on the road. This Jags team, they should be fine, but against this Bills, great team? Absolutely not. So, Bills get the win on the road there. Ooh, we got some nice matchups here. Woof, at uh, week nine. Packers at the Chiefs. Ooh, that's going to be a great one. But we're going to take the Chiefs here. Chiefs at home. Got to give it up for him. Um, Aaron Rodgers against Patrick Mahomes. He kind of flounders. I mean, Aaron Rodgers kind of flounders when he has to play the elite the elite competition at quarterback. He's, I mean, we just saw him flounder against, you know, Tom Brady. Now he's going to have to do it against Patrick Mahomes. I'm going to take Patrick Mahomes there with the win. All right. Then we get the Broncos at the Cowboys. And I think this is going to be a real solid game here. And I'm going to call the Broncos to pull off the upset on the road. I mean, this Broncos defense, I think, is going to be very, very solid this season. And the Cowboys, like we said, they got Dan Quinn as their defense coordinator. I cannot trust that man, folks. He got it done with the Legion of Boom. Is that impressive? Is that impressive? Come on. I mean, and this Cowboys team just has absolutely garbage defense, so no way we're trusting this Cowboys team. Alrighty, Chargers at the Eagles. Ooh, this is going to be a good one as well. Um, we're going to give the Eagles some love here. Getting a win at home. Nick Sirianni, week nine, trying to get everything figured out. Chargers on the road. Maybe overlook this game a little bit. We'll give the, Char we'll give the Eagles some love here with the win. All right, the Raiders coming off of a bye going to the Giants here. So, real interesting game here. The Raiders coming off the bye should be good, but I really love what this Giants team is doing, especially offensively. And now we're kind of hitting the midway season mark here with this Raiders team, Week 9. And if we're following the trend of what happened the last two seasons with the Raiders of floundering at the back half of the season... This could potentially be the start of it. So Raiders coming off of the bye. Hopefully they study. But uh, at the end of the day, I'm going to take this Giants team at home. Patriots at the Panthers. I'm going to give it up for this Patriots team here. Patriots defense against Sam Darnold. Uh, they've got history with each other. This Patriots team with uh, Cam Newton, ex-Panther, wanting to kind of prove himself. And I think the, Panther, uh, the Patriots get the win over the Panthers. Titans at the Rams now. We got to take this Rams team. This defense of the Rams should be solid all season. This Titans team, the defense should be good, but how's Ryan Tannehill going to look? We're going to take Matt Stafford in this Rams defense over, uh, unfortunately, Derrick Henry and that Titans emerging good defense potentially. Vikings at the Ravens, and the Ravens are coming off of a bye. That's going to be easy peasy there. Lamar Jackson, I don't think this Vikings team is going to be able to keep up with him. 
offensively or defensively. They can't they can't do either of those. Uh, then the Bears at the Steelers, and I'm going to take the Steelers here. Um, week nine, so if Andy Dalton is starting here for the Bears, I'm sure he's not going to be by week nine. Uh, in the Steelers team, the defense and Najee Harris, I think they're going to be really hitting their stride. Big Ben just has to be game manager back half of the season, and we're really just kind of counting on the Steelers defense to really pull through most of the time here. So we'll have the Steelers with the win. Monday Night Football as well. Steelers at home. Got to give it up for that. Alrighty, here we go. Another game. Cardinals at the 49ers. Once again, a division game. So I'm going to give it to the 49ers for the home team there. And then the Falcons at the Saints here. The Saints team, man, I'm really not sure how their offense is going to look. That is truly the big question mark here. How are these quarterbacks going to come in uh, through their competition and really kind of pan out? Are they going to be able to really kind of replicate? It doesn't even have to be 100%, but at least some 80% of what Drew Brees can kind of do throughout the entire season. But uh, we'll have the Saints here at home. They get the win over the Falcons. Division game at home. We'll give the Saints the win. All righty, let's do Week 10. We here now and then we'll end it there uh for the day <clears throat> so here we go ravens at the dolphins thursday night football now it is thursday night football so you know you never really can kind of get a firm gauge on how i mean you you would expect the ravens to beat the dolphins but it's thursday night football at home the dolphins ravens just coming off of who did they have last week uh, the Vikings, they came off the bye, so maybe they are ready to go a little bit more. Dolphins coming off the Texans, so really kind of two easier opponents coming into this Thursday night football game. Call me crazy. I'm going to take the Dolphins at home here. Thursday night football, Brian Flores. Let's see what this defense can do. Lamar Jackson coming off of a shorter week. Maybe he's not ready to go either, so I'm going to take the Dolphins here. Jags at the Colts. Once again, oh my God, this Colts team, two easy weeks here. Woo, Colts, easy peas against the Jags, no problem. Bills at the Jets here, and I can't even give the Jets a win at the home at home for this year. There's no way. Um, I, I'm not believing in Robert Sala that much quite yet. I think he's probably the best of the rookie head coaches this season, but that's not saying much when you're going against Dan Campbell. So um, I'm going to take the Bills there on the road. Browns at the Patriots. Ooh, Baker Mayfield, Bill Belichick. Ooh, how does this one play out? Patriots at home here, but I do like what this Browns team can do, and I'm not 100% buying into this Patriots team just quite yet. I'm going to take the Browns. The defense is able to kind of handle Cam Newton. It's not dangerous to me, folks. Those Tier 2 wide receivers that they brought in, the Tier 2 tight ends that they brought in during their extravagant spending during the offseason before the draft, that's not impressing me, folks, especially with Cam Newton. Now, if you give me Aaron Rodgers with those weapons, yeah, I, I can get behind that. Tom Brady with those weapons, uh, Matt Stafford with those weapons. Uh, who else with those weapons? I'll take Patrick Mahomes with those weapons. I'll take Carson Wentz with those weapons. But I cannot take Cam Newton with those weapons. I have to, I've got the Browns winning on the road. Chiefs at the Raiders. The Chiefs get it done. The Chiefs are going to have their vengeance on that Raiders on this Raiders team all season long because they kind of ended the perfect season. Um, the Chiefs lost the last week of the season, and they uh, also lost against the Raiders. I, those were their two losses last season, right? They were 14-2 and two last year. So um, they're going to be on their A game to beat these Raiders, punish them for what they did last season, and there's really no contest. Chiefs on the road. Eagles at the Broncos. Broncos at home. I'm going to take that all day. Broncos at home. Mile high. Let's see what Teddy Bridgewater is looking like in the defense at home. Solid. So, yeah. Nick Sirianni traveling. Probably not going to be good this entire season. Then we get the Vikings at the Chargers. This one should be a good one as well. Um, what do we got there? What do we got the Chargers record at? Where's the Chargers record at right now? Uh, four and four, and the Vikings are three and four. I'm trying not to have. I mean, uh, I'm looking at the uh, the AFC South right now, and it's Colts at ten and zero, and then the second place is Titans at two and seven, the Jags at one and eight, and the Texans at one and eight. Now, I mean, these are trash teams we're going to be talking about, and maybe the Titans aren't going to be this bad. And I'm trying not to like hammer home or hammer down one team so I but I also don't want record to play into it a little bit but uh maybe record does have to play into it a little bit but Vikings at the Chargers here gonna be a good one but I'm gonna take the Chargers at home I really think um that uh 
Justin Herbert is going to take kind of another step here in the first step. That rookie year step was absolutely fantastic. And this Chargers team, I mean, there's a lot of pressure on this head coach and the organization at the kind of uh, front office level because they just fired Anthony Lynn for losing all the close games. So, I mean, if you're going to believe that, you know, they found the right head coach and they're making the right decision and they really firmly believe that Anthony Lynn was the main reason why they were losing all those close games, then you got to expect that they win these kind of the, the teams that are similar to them at home you would have to expect that this Chargers team wins those games this year so I'm gonna take the Chargers there at home over the Vikings Lions coming off of a bye against the Steelers, and the Lions lose another one. They go 0-9, folks. That's easy. The Steelers' defense is going to e absolutely eat this Lions team alive. They've got no weapons for Jared Goff. I am a believer in Jared Goff, but I'm not a believer in anybody else on that team. DeAndre Swift should have a solid season this year, but he fumbled a lot last year, really kind of bungled it in the big-time scenarios last year, and that's just Dan Campbell. Zero trust there. Zero believe again. Zero trust. I've got Got nothing. Um, but let's keep going here. Saints at the Titans. I'm going to give the Titans a little love here and uh, say they get the win. The defense steps it up here. They beat the Saints on the road. Panthers at the Cardinals now. And I'm going to take this Cardinals team. Sam Darnold, there's nothing to me that proves that he's going to work out in this league. I know that he was with Adam Gase. And that's, yeah, I can definitely understand that. I put that excuse on there. Absolutely. Sam Darnold is better than what Adam Gase tried to do with him. I understand that. But year one with this Panthers team, seeing what Teddy Bridgewater did last year, I don't know if Sam Darnold is going to be able to replicate that year one and try to get a little bit better than that, especially against this Cardinals team late in the season. I'm not buying it. Cardinals get the win. Falcons at the Cowboys now. Should be a pretty decent game here. Falcons just got blown out. Didn't they get blown out? It was like a real wonky game, real high scoring, and then the onside kick the Cowboys got, and then they beat the Falcons. Something along those lines, I believe, happened this season. Uh, so the Falcons potentially trying to kind of overcome that, and this Cowboys defense trying to kind of, Dan Quinn maybe trying to scheme a little bit too hard to kind of shut down that Falcons offense. I'm going to have the Falcons winning. You may think it's the opposite with Dan Quinn trying to do his all here, but I can't. Tr I don't trust Dan Quinn as a defense coordinator, especially going against this Falcons team that has pieces everywhere, especially freaking um, um, Kyle Pitts at the tight end position. Oh my God, he's going to be running all over this Cowboys team. They're not going to be able to stop him, especially when you have to guard Julio Jones and Calvin Ridley, speedsters, tall A1 tier 1 wide receivers. Oh my gosh. Oof, this Falcons offense. I can't wait to watch it work. And it's definitely going to get it done week 10 here uh, at the Cowboys. Oh, yo. Whoa. Then we get another good matchup here week 10. Buccaneers coming off of the bye at Washington, who's also coming off of a bye. And why is this game real interesting? Because we just saw it in the first round of the playoffs last season. And the Washington defense was really getting after Tom Brady and making it really competitive. So this one's going to be a real good game here. And I'm going to call it a little bit of an upset here. I'm going to take Washington at home over this Bucks team. Yes, sir. Washington gets back on track with the win defensively. And they beat the box. Yes, sir. Seahawks at the Packers. Seahawks coming off of a bye at the Packers. So I'm going to take the Seahawks here with the win. Um, this Seahawks defense against Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers with the or Seahawks defense with that bye. Studying Aaron Rodgers. I'm going to take the Seahawks with the win there. And then the Rams at the 49ers. Ugh. I know the 49ers, they are in the same division, and the 49ers are at home, but I really love what this Rams defense is going to be able to do this season. Jimmy Garoppolo, how well is he going to really kind of start and be able to keep playing throughout this entire season? So I'm going to take the Rams here, really separating themselves in the NFC here. Um, they are able to beat the 49ers. Um, all righty. So, after 10 weeks, anything change here in the standings? Steelers stat 7-2, top of the AFC North. Colts top of the AFC South at 10 and 0. Bills at top of the AFC East at 7 and 2. Chiefs at top of the AFC West at 10 and 0. Packers top of the NFC North at 6 and 4. Buccaneers top of the NFC South at 7 and 2. Giants at top of the AFC East at or NFC East at 6 and 3 and the Rams are top of the NFC West at 8 and 2. All right, so nothing really has changed here. The division leaders are all still the same here. So we've got real, I mean, we've got some real bad teams over uh, so far for 10 weeks. We got the Bengals at 2 and 7. We got the Titans at 3 and 7. The Jags at 1 and 8. The Texans at 1 and 8. The Jets at 1 and 8. Patriots at 5 and 5, kind of, you know, 500 right there. 
Uh, Raiders at two and seven. 49ers at four and five. Eagles at two and eight. Cowboys at three and five. Panthers at two and eight. Saints at two and seven. Lions at zero oh and nine. Vikings at three and five. Bears at four and five. So we've really got big disparity in this league, and I really don't want to see this. I don't want to see this actually come true here. I don't want to see you know good like the the division leaders are only the good teams, and everybody else is kind of trash here. We got the Browns close. At 7-3, challenging the Steelers there. We've got um, the Dolphins challenging the Bills at 7-3. We've got the Broncos challenging the, challenging the Chiefs at 7-3. We've got the Cardinals and the Seahawks. Uh, Seahawks at 6-3. Cardinals at 7-3 challenging the Rams there. Washington challenging the Giants at 4-5. Falcons kind of challenging the Bucks at 5-4. And maybe the Bears kind of challenging the Packers at uh, four and five, but uh, yeah, some big kind of disparity here in the talent, and uh, hopefully we get a little bit of a closer overall season. But uh, this is how we see it playing out ten weeks into the season, and I really kind of don't want this to happen, but we'll see.